reading schedules. We're going to learn about how to read a schedule. This is lesson 7.8. A schedule is a list of times and things that need to be done or things that will happen. A television schedule tells us which shows will be on and the time they'll be on. A class schedule will tell us which school class to be in and the time to be there. You can see from this schedule that math starts at 9 o'clock, science starts at 10, history starts at 11, and then lunch starts at 12. You can even see when each class is going to end and when lunch is going to end, 10 minutes before the next hour. And movie theaters have schedules for the start of movies. Despicable Me, well, their showing times are 1 o'clock p.m., that means it's going to be 1 in the afternoon, 3 o'clock, 5 o'clock, 7 o'clock. And the movie Leap is going to be aired at 1.30 p.m., so that's 1.30 in the afternoon, 3.30, 5.30, 7.30. And we can see their movies are every two hours, aren't they? From 1 o'clock to 3 o'clock, we'd say 1, 2, 3. It's two hours. From 3 to 5, is two hours and from five to seven is two hours. And even though these have a 30 for the minutes, they're every two hours. So we know what time to be at the movie theater to catch the movie. Now here's Emma's schedule. And this is make pretend for the lesson, but I made a schedule for Emma and we can see from eight o'clock to three o'clock she's in school. From 3.30 to 4.30 she has a swimming lesson. From five o'clock to six o'clock she eats dinner. From 6 o'clock to 6.30, she does chores. From 6.30 to 7.30, she does her homework. Then she has a bath at 7.30, and then at 9 o'clock, she's in bed. So we're going to use Emma's schedule to complete each one of these sentences. We're going to have little clocks that'll help us, okay? So let's look at the first one. It says, Emma is in school for blank hours. Well, we can see on the schedule, she starts school at 8 and gets out at 3. So we're going to use these little clocks up here. She starts school at 8 and she gets out at 3. So we're going to have to count the hours. And it's going to be easier for us because they're o'clocks. Both minute hands are on the 12. So how many hours are going to pass from 8 o'clock to 3 o'clock? We know that it goes in this direction, doesn't it? That's called clockwise. So the hour hand is going to slowly move around this way until it gets to the three. So let's count the hops it would take for this hour hand to get over here to the three, okay? So if the hour hand is pointing here, we can go one hour, two hour, three hour, four hours, five hours, six hours, seven hours. We did seven hops. So we know from the schedule that Emma is in school for seven hours. All right. Well, the next one says she starts school at blank o'clock. She starts school at, looking at the schedule, the start time is eight o'clock. She starts school at eight o'clock. Her swimming lesson is blank minutes. Her swimming lesson starts at 3.30 and ends at 4.30. So how many minutes are those? Here's 3.30 and here's 4.30. So how many minutes went by? We can skip count by fives. If it's already pointing here, we'll start skip counting with the seven. Okay, and we're going to count by fives for each hour number, okay? So that's 5 minutes, 10, 15, 20, 25, 30, 35, 40, 45, 50, 55, 60. So it's one hour from 3.30 to 4.30, and we know that one hour is 60 minutes, isn't it? All right? We have to be careful because it didn't say her lesson is blank hours, it said minutes. So even though it was one hour, we had to write it as minutes. The next one says, Emma does chores for blank minutes. Well, her chores, she starts them at 6 and she's finished at 6.30. We 
we can just look at this and see the only difference between the 6 o'clock and the 6.30 is the 30. That's 30 minutes. This is zero minutes. Now it's 30 minutes. So that was an easy one. She does chores for 30 minutes. She probably helps with the dishes or takes out the garbage, right, after dinner. Okay. Now it says she eats dinner blank hours after school. So she's eating dinner at 5 o'clock, but it says after school. See that? So when school gets out, it's 3 o'clock. She eats dinner at 5 o'clock. How many hours after school is she eating dinner? She gets out of school at 3 o'clock. She eats dinner at 5 o'clock. So if the hour hand was pointing to the 3 like this, we would count hops 1 hour, 2 hours. From 3 o'clock to 5 o'clock is 2 hours. So she eats dinner 2 hours after school. All right? This last one says after dinner, she has blank hours until bedtime. Or bedtime is at 9 o'clock. After dinner, her dinner ends at 6. It goes from 5 o'clock to 6 o'clock. So after dinner, that would be the 6 o'clock, she has blank hours until bedtime. So we have to go from 6 o'clock to 9 o'clock. She finishes dinner at 6 o'clock. She goes to bed at 9 o'clock. The hour hand's pointing to the 6. So if it's pointing at the 6, we can count the hops from this 6 to that 9. 1 hour, 2 hours, 3 hours, 3 hops. And schedules are very helpful. They help keep us on time and let us know when things are happening. On the TV, we'll know when our favorite show is coming on by looking at the guide, right? It tells you the channel, it tells you the time and the name of the show, and that's a schedule that guide on the TV. And there's schedules all over the place, and you'll come across them very often. Okay? So we're going to work on calendars next, and I hope I'll see you there. Bye.